Okay, <laughs> solving polynomial <laughs> equations algebraically, right? So that's what one of us thought we were doing yesterday, but he's not here right now. <laughs> right? Why is he not? But what we did yesterday is what we're going to do to solve these, right? So now we have an equation. Uh, so for example, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. So yesterday it was factor. Today it's solve. Okay, so solve x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 4 equals 0. Okay. And check. Okay, so we're going to solve it and we're going to verify our answers. We're going to pretend we do not have a calculator capable of graphing this or any other technology, right? Because part of your, you know, you get one IB exam where it's like no calculators. What? So you can't, you know, if you keep relying on calculators to do stuff for you, then bad news because in grade 12, one of those exams, when you don't get a calculator, you're going to be in trouble. So. so let us start off by listing the possible rational zeros. Yeah. Okay. Now, there is no leading coefficient, right? Otherwise, it would be factors of 4 over factors of whatever the leading coefficient was, right? One plus one plus one. Okay. So we only have six possible zeros. So we could kind of look at this and, and sort of preview it and say, you know, if I try a 1, I'm going to get 1 plus 2, which is 3, minus 7 plus, you know, I think 1 is going to work, right? Okay. And same thing, if one doesn't work, then you can sort of try a negative one before you formally, or if you like, you just write it out. It doesn't really matter if you formally show it or if you sort of guess which one is going to, or not guess, but you sort of check which one is going to work. But you must show it working, okay? So this is an important, this is an important step. You have to show, so P of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared. I'm going to put that in brackets just in case it were a negative one. Minus 7 times 1 plus 4, which is equal to 1 plus 2 minus 7 plus 4, which is equal to 0. Okay, so now what do we say? X minus one. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. <coughs> Yes, that's how you do therefore. If you put the three dots upside down, it's since. Therefore, since. There's since in a T, since in a T. The puns, the puns, the puns. The puns, the puns. Oh, wait. There, Cincinnati Reds. Okay, so x minus 1 is our divisor. We do synthetic division by the subtraction method. You may also choose to do it by the addition method, or God forbid, long division, but. Thank you. One, two, negative seven, four. So we know we're going to end up with a remainder of zero. If you don't, then you may have made a mistake up here, right? So doing it here isn't a guarantee that it goes in. It's just, well, I'm pretty sure if I, if I didn't make any mistakes, then this should go in, right? Okay, so bring down the one, negative one, three, negative three, negative four, four, zero. Okay, so the factored form. So we would say what? x minus 1, x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. This is the factored form. Oh, you caught up with us because now we're doing what you thought we were doing yesterday. <laughs> x minus 1, x, oh, I don't know, let's go plus 4 and minus.
minus 1. X squared minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3 minus 4. Okay, that works. Which is really uh, X minus 1 quantity squared and X plus 4. Okay, now, I didn't really need to write that out because the solution is X equals 1 or X equals negative 4. Okay, there's only two solutions. If we're going to graph that, we know we have a root of multiplicity 2. We know that we have a positive leading coefficient, right? So then we know how to graph that. We're going to cut through negative 4 and then bounce off of the 1. Okay, so it's going to cut through negative 4 and bounce off the 1. Okay, so that is the solution to this. Now we want to check. So to check our solutions, we're going to check x equals 1. Uh, now, in a sense, we already did that, right? We checked x equals 1 because we substituted in. And to check, what we're doing is just going to use the remainder theorem, right? Just to say, well, if this is a factor, or the factor theorem, I guess. Uh, if this is a factor, then to check p at 4, or to check the, the value 4, we can just evaluate p of 4, which is really what we would do anyway, right? You'd substitute a 4 in. So p of 4 is equal to 4 cubed plus 2 times 4 squared minus 7 times 4 plus 4 which is 64 plus what do we got 32 minus 28 plus 4 ah, well that would make a lot more sense because 4 is not checking very well is it too, too many positive numbers there so, see, p at 4 doesn't check because that's not the answer. It's sitting off at the bottom of the page there. p at negative 4 is negative 4. That's why I put brackets around this thing when I'm cubing it, right? Regardless of whether it's positive or negative. If I get in the habit of doing that, then I'm not just going to write negative 4 cubed, which regardless is still negative 64 no matter how you work it out. You know, it's not a tragedy with the uh, cube. With the squared, though, it will be wrong if you don't enclose it in brackets, right? So plus 2 times negative 4 squared minus 7 times negative 4 plus 4. So that's negative 64 uh, plus 32 plus 28 plus 4. So that must add up to 64. Yeah, it does. Which is 0. So that checks, right? So we have verified that negative 4 is a root. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, solve. X times X plus 4. Zero. No, that would be too easy, right? If we're equal to zero, so it's equal to 4. No! If I make it equal to zero, then it just... Well, oh, flashy red and blues. Oh, two of them, too. Listen, Doppler effect. Well, then, is it a red shift or a blue shift as they're coming towards us? Because I see both red and blue lights. Okay, how are we going to solve this? Don't expand. We have to expand it, right? No. We have to expand it, get everything to one side, set it equal to zero. And okay, when I expand, what am I going to do first? I'm going to do the two binomials first, right? Leave that x out for And I don't have to, but it's easier. Okay. I don't care how you do it, really. Just get it right. So we got what? X squared plus 5x plus 4. Oh, I wrote the question down. Okay, PRZs. Plus or minus one, two, or four, right? I guess two. You guess, guess two. two. What do we get? I don't know. I just guessed it. Eight plus twenty plus I don't think so. Okay. Negative two. Negative two. Negative two. I lied. So okay, let's take a look at this. 
if you put a positive in, all of this has to be equal to negative or equal to four, which is not likely since any of these will give at least four here. So we could probably start off by saying, I don't think X is positive. Because if it is, negative this is just going to be way too big. Negative two. Negative two. Okay, so let's try negative two. Okay, So then what do we say from this? So we say x plus 2 is a factor, right? Therefore. Therefore. says way too much of it. I agree. Okay, so having found a factor and having shown that we have found a factor, using the remainder theorem, or the factor theorem, I mean, they're kind of the same. White factor theorem just says if the remainder <coughs> is zero. So using the factor theorem to show that we have a factor, we then do a synthetic division, reducing this to a uh, binomial times a trinomial. Right, and this extends up. If we were doing a fourth degree that didn't factor, right, sometimes fourth degrees will just factor as, as you know, two, depending on the number of terms there are, and stuff like that, it, there's a simpler factorization. But if we're doing a full fourth degree with a fourth power and a third and a second and a first and a, and a constant term, still the same idea, right? Possible rational zeros. It's factors of the constant term divided by factors of the leading term. Find a zero. Show that it is. Do a synthetic division. You'll reduce it to a degree one less than what you had. So if you had a fourth degree, you'll get a cubic. Then you do the same thing with the cubic, right? Then you're just doing this, really. At this point, you're just doing this. Okay, so we now know that in factored form, it is x plus 2 and x squared plus 3x minus 2. Which is x plus 2 and x squared. x minus what? No, because that, that makes negative three. That makes that positive two. Okay, so then what is it? It can't, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't we can't factor this. Well, you can try the quadratic uh, Oh, all right. So it's kind of depressing. So this won't factor. I told you should have. Which means? Okay, I forget the quadratic formula. What is it? X equals, X, equals X, equals X, X is equal to There you go. Good job. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there are some physics formulas you could see. You know to the tune of something. <laughs> okay, so what do we got? Now, since C is negative, I know there will be two distinct solutions, right? Two distinct real roots. Because A is positive. If I always make sure my A is positive, if C is negative, this, is, this B squared is always positive. This will also be positive. You will have two distinct real roots. Okay, what do we got? Three squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2. All right, what do we got? 9 plus 8, so 17. That's nice because that doesn't do anything. Okay. Or x is equal to what? Negative 2. Okay, so the negative 2 comes from this factor. 
I'll check it. No. And you could check, right? You'd have to put negative 3 plus root 17 over 2. So Grant is going to come up and do a check for us on this board. Yes. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I think you should. You said now check it. Feel, feel free to erase this. But I like that drawing. Yeah. So you substitute in, uh, we'll just have you do one. You can I substitute negative no, 3 okay, plus guys. root 17 <laughs> over 2, and you're going to substitute that into the original. I don't even know what the oh. original was. Which is x cubed, so write this down. x cubed <laughs> plus 5x squared. I've got this, guys. Yeah, you got this. x cubed plus 5x squared. He's going to get it wrong. Yep, I probably have. I'll just make it. X, x cubed. Okay, x. Actually, that. X. Plus 5x squared. So small. I know, right? He's going to have to write small. It's going to take a little room. Plus 4x minus 4. Oh, God. X minus 4. And you are going to substitute in a value of negative 3 plus root 17 over 2. No calculator, man. No calculator. No calculator. No, no. This is exact value. Yeah. Plus root 17, Plus root 17 over, over 2. Okay, got okay. so you might as well just put brackets around that and say cubed. <laughs> Plus 5 times. Oh no, he, he, he's going to be there for the next half hour. Which is yeah. Fine. So I'm not pausing. Hey, I'm doing the question, guys. So, um... Continue with it. Well, he checks that. Yeah, so any questions in the book will be, there will be some variations of this. Some of the questions when you get off into the 80s and stuff like that, we'll stick a K in there and say you've got like 4X cubed plus 3X squared minus KX plus 7 equals 0, but they'll give you some information. Like if they give you a root, then you can calculate what the value of K is, right? Because you'll know that P of that root is equal to 0 and you substitute it and you solve for K. Now you have one of the factors, and you have the, the, the cubic, and you do a synthetic division, and you get to thin, and you go from there. Okay? So it's okay, guys. He's got a cube. That's not how you cube that. You gotta square I know. It. You got to square it first. But I don't 